Today's show is brought to you by Audible, and right now you can get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash joined up. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Thanks for tuning in to the Joined Up Writing Podcast, a weekly show featuring interviews with fantastic authors sharing their personal stories on how and why they write. There's hints and tips for aspiring writers and great book reviews from top bloggers. Follow us on Twitter at JU Podcast. Right, cue the cheesy theme tune. Put down your pen and stop your typing. Grab yourself a drink. It's joined up writing. Yes, hello and welcome to the Joined Up Writing Podcast, where a little procrastination can go a long way. I'm Wayne Kelly and it's episode 88 and one of our special NaNoWriMo shows. Today I've got Red Pen Editing and Scrivener Virgin guru, Anne Rainbow, giving us her tips on how Scrivener, which is an amazing, inexpensive bit of software, can turbocharge your NaNoWriMo experience. Experience. And if you're listening to this and already scratching your head as to what NaNoWriMo is, sometimes abbreviated to NaNo, it's National Novel Writing Month and it comes around every November. It's an international online contest to see if you can write at least 50,000 words between the beginning and end of November. It's great fun, challenging but rewarding and there are local support groups wherever you live. If you listen to the show regularly, you'll know that I'm a religious zealot when it comes to writing with Scrivener, and if that fact has somehow passed you by, then stay tuned because Anne and I give you the rundown on what it is and how it can literally transform the way you write your novels, short stories, plays, and even screenplays. And in this episode, we'll be paying particular attention to how Scrivener can give you a better chance of hitting your nano target, but also how it will make editing and finishing the novel so much easier. So let's get to it because as the show is released we're only a couple of weeks away from the start of Nano and you lot are going to need every spare second you can get your hands on. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Overcast, YouTube or wherever else you can find podcasts and if it's your first time you may be pleased to know there are hundreds more episodes over at joinedupwriting.co.uk so hit the subscribe button. Okay, let me tell you a bit more about today's guest, Anne Rainbow. So Anne is maybe best known as Scrivener Virgin, and her Scrivener Virgin blog over at scrivenervirgin.com motivates writers to make the most of what I regularly tell you is an amazing piece of software. And as Red Pen mentor, she published her book, Editing the Red Pen Way, as a guide to writers wishing to self-edit and... For a select few, Anne actually supports writers in achieving their publishing dreams via her mentoring scheme. I'll also put some more info in the show notes, but for now, let's get to the chat. Okay, Anne, thanks so much for joining us on Joined Up Writing for this special NaNoWriMo edition. Really, really appreciate you coming on. How's things? Uh, Pretty good, actually. A bit um, bit frantic in the run-up because obviously you plan to do so much and actually then the time runs out, so... I can't believe it's October already. <laughs> I know, I know it does come around really quickly already and people are raring to go for writing those 50,000 words or more mm. in the in the month of uh, November. And uh, I wanted to do this, um, this particular episode because specifically you kind of specialise or one of the things that you look at um, is Scrivener, which is something anybody that listens to the podcast for more than a few episodes will hear me bleating on about it. I'll crowbar it into most conversations when I speak to other writers if they haven't tried it because I love it. Um, And I actually got, I found Scrivener through NaNoWriMo originally when I did it back in 2012 or something like that. And I got a discount code and I thought, well, I'll give it a try. But why why don't you Um, tell us, first of all, for people that are listening, there will be people out there that don't even know what we're talking about. So first of all, why don't we start off with you telling us what Scrivener is for the uninitiated? Is it just another version of Microsoft Word? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, that's what one of the things that people assume. And then when they look at uh, Scrivener the first time, they're a bit thrown by it because it's actually far more uh, complex than that. It's actually a project management tool rather than a word processor so that you have everything in one place, like your research uh, material, any notes that you've done, your character sketches, location sketches, whatever 
material that you write other than the manuscript itself is also in the same folder, in the same project folder, as it were, as um, as everything. So that nothing gets lost, basically. And uh, it, it's not just a word processor at all. Never. So that's, so that's one of the main misconceptions. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the first things. So what about yourself? How did you come across Scrivener in the first place? And what, what when did you sort of realise that the power that was in the software? Well, I was the same as you. Uh, I I did Nano going back, I think it was 2009, my first one. Mm -hmm. And I and I, and I won, um, like you do. And, and I got my Scrivener thing. Now, I am a software expert. You know, I've been in software forever. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at it, I thought, you know, I haven't got time. And, it, and I, I, can't, I, I learn new software to teach it all the time. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I just literally just, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> and then oh, must, it must have been, um, it must have been about three or four years later, somebody, I know, another writer said to me, I seem you're using Scrivener. And I said, oh, I've got it somewhere on one of my machines. I've got it somewhere. And she said, oh, you know, I can't believe you're not using it. It's amazing. And, and she sent me a link to a webinar i think it was probably somebody like joseph michael some, someone like that one of the normal you know clever people on <laughs> and i got myself a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and sat watching i thought oh my god i mean i have just spent the last like four nanos doing using word right? and i had yeah. four very messy manuscripts whereas the next one i did i did in scrivener and I made a point. I think I took it up in about um, April, May time. I started blogging in the September because I thought if I start blogging, I'll have to do this. Yeah. It'll make me learn new stuff. Every week I have to tackle something new. And uh, so that November, I did my first novel in Nano, uh, in Scrivener. Uh, and it was just such a breeze. I mean, not that writing a novel is a breeze, you know, but <laughs> the fact that I could, just, I could throw everything in, whatever occurred to me. I just threw it into the same file and it was there. I didn't lose anything. Um, I've actually had just had one of my mentees email me today. She was working in Word and she was convinced to get Scrivener. And she'd just sent me some missing scenes that she couldn't find because they mm -hmm. were in a, on a memory stick somewhere. Now, if you were using Scrivener, they wouldn't be on a memory stick. They would actually all be in the one document and you just don't lose stuff. Uh, so, yeah, so I think it was about probably four years ago now, maybe. I, I lose track, frankly, um, but I would never go back. I mean, I, I, I very occasionally have to use Word for various reasons. If I'm designing anything like a poster or a leaflet, I go straight into InDesign. Mm -hmm. I can't be fussing around with trying to make images be where they should be mm -hmm. in Word. Mm -hmm. And so anything that needs any kind of design, I go to InDesign. But everything else I, I use Scrivener for, not just writing either. I mean, I use it for my blog posts, for my, my Scrivener tips, my editing tips. Uh, my marketing plan, um, you know, you asked me earlier on to send you a blurb, a bio about me. I've got one Scrivener project mm -hmm. that has all of the marketing effort I've done, and it has all of my bios. I mean, I tweak them all for individuals. So, I'll, you know, it'll take me yeah. five minutes to go and look at them and think, okay, well, what do I want here? I'll look at the one I used last time, and I'll update it if necessary. So everything's where it should be, and that's I'm a bit, you know, I'm a bit like that, bit OCD. Um. <laughs> well, you come from a software background, so that's you know that's probably yeah. part part of that. Let's let's take a step back. So obviously, this is effectively radio. So people, I would encourage people to go over to your site and, and take a look at the images and the different things you've got on there because you've got loads and loads of information at Scrivener Virgin, um, and I will put the links in the show notes as well. But for people that are listening to this and they're on their way to work or wherever they might be, just give us a bit of an idea. So when they first open up Scrivener, what does it look like? And kind of just explain things like the binder and things like that, which to people that have been using just a word processor, probably quite an alien concept. Yeah, basically that you have mainly you have three sections on your screen. The left hand side we call the binder, and that's a bit like a ring binder. You can think of it like that if you like. The middle area is what we call the editing pane, which is where you actually do your writing or you see other stuff. And on the right hand side, I usually have what's called the inspector, which gives me information about the scene or the chapter that I'm currently working on. Um, that middle area, the editing pane, is more powerful because you can actually, you can look at either the text, we call it scrivenings, mm -hmm. or you can look at what we call the cork board. Now, that's a bit like literally a cork board on your wall. Yeah. And every scene, uh, I actually put all my scenes, one per document, all my scenes are one card on that wall. Mm -hmm. And I can move them around. I can write a synopsis on the front of the card so I can see it. 
I can make notes as to who we meet, what information is revealed. So I can I can get an overview of my of my my manuscript. And in fact, in the run up to November the first, there will be no words because I'm not allowed to write any words till the first of November. That's right. But that court board will be populated. And, and dare I say, it'll be populated in the next fortnight because I have to do it. <laughs> um, and that's how I'll do my planning. There's also another option, which is called the outliner, which is a, a vertical list of your themes. Now, I actually prefer a visual effect, so uh-huh. I prefer the court board. But, you know, the, the outliner suits some people. And the outliner also includes columns where you can have the target for each of your themes and your progress. So in the middle of November, if I'm thinking, oh, what shall I write next? Rather than having to, you know, rummage through a word file, I'll just go to the outliner. I'll look to see which scenes I haven't even started, and I'll just write those scenes. The ones that are green, I know I've done them. I've done enough words for them. So you don't have to write things from beginning to end. You can write things in any order you like. So whichever scenes are most vivid to you, you can mm-hmm. write them first. Absolutely, um, you've got complete control over it. Yeah, and you can see it from you know, because you can see it from left to right, upside down. You can look from the bottom up, the top down. And, that really suits all kinds of different ways of working. Some people are much better on the big picture. Mm-hmm. You know, they do a really detailed plan. Other people think, oh, to heck with that. I'm just going to start writing. Yeah. And either way you do it, you can do it in Scrivener. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, probably a good way to think about it is it's not that you're particularly working necessarily differently from the get-go because – Probably there are lots of people when they sit down to write a novel or they think about a novel over a period of time, they will collect bits and pieces. There might be bits of research. There might be websites that they found some links or that there might be pictures that they've got for their character outlines or whatever it might be. And, mm-hmm. you know, in those things, as you say, whether you print them out and you have an actual physical folder, which I know some writers like Ian Rankin and people like that do that, but whether you do that or whether you have a folder on your desktop or on your computer that you store all these things, as you say, these are all separate things spread out, you know, with whatever organization you can kind of put on them. But with Scrivener, it's all in the same thing, isn't it? So all in one place. Yeah. So, so I mentioned there sort of, so characters and research. So how does Scrivener handle that? What's powerful about it from that point of view? Well, I'm on a Mac. So uh, I was explaining this last night, actually, in the Simply Scrivener special. And I'm currently planning the locations for my next novel. And so I decided that this guy is going to be mostly on the golf course. I did a search on golf courses. I found some golf courses that appeal to me. Now, I, I like to see images to give me uh, a mental picture when I start to write about him actually going along the golf course. Mm-hmm. So I'm physically looking at a green and while I've got him talking to his, his golf mate. Mm-hmm. And I'll have a picture of a bar and I'll actually look at that while I'm writing. I use all these visual prompts. So for that, I would normally I'd copy the URL from the homepage and I'd put that into my research folder uh, under Golf Club. And then I'd also uh, I could drag images if the images were draggable or I could take screen grabs of them um, and I could just pull them into the research area. So when I'm thinking in terms of um, writing a particular scene, I can look at those images while I'm doing it. Uh, if it's a particular location, I'll actually have it in the location sketch mm-hmm. itself. I'll actually build a location sketch. And uh, then when I'm actually writing, I would split that middle editing pane into two. On the left, I'd have my words while I'm writing. And on the right, I'd have my prompt material, my pictures, my notes. It might be the character sketch with, you know, what color eyes they've got, what hair they have, and what have you, because I'm you know, I'm rubbish at remembering stuff. <laughs> me too. I, I can't even remember. I can't even remember the character names sometimes. If somebody gives <laughs> me... You know, what's your novel about? I say, oh, yeah, her name's Helen. Oh, is it Helen still? Because obviously they change. Change. some of my characters change names as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I write it down because I can't be trusted to remember everything. <laughs> and that way I can be I can be more consistent in my writing. I mean, obviously, when I get the draft done, I can go back and I can check that I haven't made mistakes all over the shop. Um, but, yeah, that's another, another thing which I love about Scriven is the collections. Now, I didn't really use them to start with because I thought, I'm very much a needs must person. I only learn new stuff when I need to learn it. I think that's like most people. I'm the same, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I don't need it, I can live without it. But Mm -hmm. one day I saw something on collection. I thought, oh, that's quite neat. Let's give it a go. And then I thought, wow, that completely changes how I think about things. When I'm doing my editing, I mean, for argument's sake, if I want to check that I've actually got Helen with the same colour hair throughout, I'll do a search on hair 
Um, and I'll look at all the scenes where I mention somebody's hair. And I'll mm-hmm. say, oh, my goodness, I've got a bit of a thing about this. Um, <laughs> maybe, I was, maybe I ought to cut them back a bit. It's amazing. You don't realise how much you might repeat. So you know, what? You, so you what is collections? So, so for people that don't know, so explain what collections okay. are. Yeah. What you do is you just search. Um, so that's just like a normal search you do in any document. But having found the scenes that, that contain the phrase that you were looking for, you can save all those scenes as a collection. It's um, it's a subset of what's in the binder, but mm-hmm. it doesn't change the binder at all. So mm-hmm. you can dip into those scenes, make some changes to the text, and they're being you're just seeing a different view. Some people think, oh, it's another copy. No, it's the same copy. You're just accessing it differently. Just organising the, the information yeah. differently for you. If you want to, uh, a book I'm working on at the moment with somebody, she's got a situation where a woman is killed by arsenic poisoning. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the word arsenic is pretty easy to find. Mm-hmm. And I've been looking at this manuscript yesterday. I said to her, I think you've introduced arsenic too early. Mm-hmm. It kind of gives the game away too early. So if you just look for the scenes with arsenic in it, and make sure you have not told the reader too much too early on. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of thing you can do using collections. Um, so you just simply do search, and then it's the very bottom of the drop-down. It says save as collection. Uh, Scrivener offer you the search, whatever you put in for your search, as the name of the collection, which makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're a bit, you know, maybe use the word very too much. You could search on very. Save it as the very collection. And then when you've got a minute, you just go through those scenes and decide, can you cut some of those berries out? If they're in dialogue, they probably probably could stay. But if they're not in dialogue, they shouldn't be there. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, the editing, I think, I mean, the writing is fantastic in Scrivener, but the editing's even better. Mm. And I've done editing in all kinds of you know shapes and sizes. Yeah, um, I agree. So easy, so easy. I agree. So you, so you talked about, just before that, you talked about, you know, splitting this pane and putting that over there and all that kind of thing. So, uh, again, for people that don't know, how easy is it to organise the screen to how you want it rather than, I mean, do you have to have it a set way? No, no. In fact, you, you can set up if you really, I mean, I haven't bothered to do this because I'm too spacey, but you can actually set up different workspace sort of formats if you if you want to. But it opens up usually just with the binder open and the editing pane. So you can have the inspector open or shut. And the editing pane, there's just one little button in the top right-hand corner. If you click on that icon, it splits the pane, and then you select what you want in each pane. There are You can actually have as many as four panes open. That's a bit advanced, really. But And I must admit, I've never found a good use of it because I'm, I focus on one thing at a time. It can be distracting, yeah. It can be distracting, yeah. So but it's a it's a one button click to get the split pane, and then you can unsplit it in with the same button. So it's it is very easy. Um, anyone who's not who's not sure, I mean, if they came along to one of my Simply Scrivener specials on the Tuesday evening, I do them every week. Nearly done it. Um, you can uh, I just show these things on screen. But mm-hmm. if you just play around with it, it's not it's not hard to find these things. Um, yeah, you can mess about because you you're not going to break out, anything. Yeah. No, no, if you just move the mouse around the screen and, and wait for the little, you know, the alt text to come up, one of them will say split screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the split screen one. Yeah. Uh, it, and I think I would encourage people, if they're new to a piece of software, it doesn't matter what it is, they should wander around the screen, take a, what I call take a walk on the wild side, <laughs> move, the, move the cursor and see what comes up. And you go, oh, I didn't know it could do that. Well, that's exciting. Um, and then you can you explore that way. And I say, we, you can't break anything. I mean, you know. Modern software. Yeah, software. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, software. exactly. And so, because one of the things that I like to do, because you mentioned like having different panes and different bits and pieces is, well, there's the composition mode, which we'll come on to in a sec. But when I'm when I'm writing, I sometimes if I've done an outline or I've made some notes on a scene, I like to have a little floating pane off to the side with those notes or the yeah. the, the the points the the um, beats that I want to hit. And again, you can have yeah. that whilst you're doing your writing, can't you? That's right. That's a quick reference pane mm. that can be separate on the, on your on your on your screen. So you have the screen the screen to one point, and then you just slide that away a bit. And it's as you say, it's almost having it on your desk, but just the one side. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what and and I mentioned there the composition mode. So tell us a little bit about that because I know Microsoft Word have started. They've got like their own version of that now, and you can uh, they just full screen oh. mode or whatever. I think it's just called full screen mode, and you can do something that's similar. They don't call it composition mode, where they sort of take away the distractions. But it's um yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, basically, there is an option where you clear the screen of everything but the piece you're writing, and you can actually you can make some pretty paper on the background. I mean, the one I've got in my example is pretty loud, actually. <laughs> I'm looking have, at it yeah, now, have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the fractals, it's a bit mad. yeah. <laughs> fractals, yeah, purple fractals. Um, actually, it matches the colour of my wallpaper in here. So, um, but yeah, if, for people who really can't cope with having anything else going around the screen, uh, then the composition mode works a treat. I personally, I. When I'm typing, I'm not actually probably even looking at the screen. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at the keyboard on you know my head somewhere. Yeah, um, and uh, I just type away like that, and I don't worry about if I've made typing mistakes. I just keep moving because it's in my head. I'm hearing the characters talk, and I need to get it down as mm-hmm. fast as I can. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't bother with quote marks or or you know I don't do an, an awful lot of punctuation on mm-hmm. that first draft. I just mm-hmm. get it into the keyboard. Um, but for some people, they do. They prefer to use that particular option, so it's, and uh, it's, it's there. So, so on on that subject, now you kind of touched on that, and you, as you say, with the first draft, the kind of way you approach it is just head down and off you go. In terms, if we think about specifically now, nano approaching and people, there'll be people that have never even tried this, and they're probably nervous at the prospect or and excited by mm. it. In terms of your actual tips for actually getting the writing done and succeeding at winning at Nano, what what are some of the some of the tips that you would give people? It's important to uh, be aware that it's, there are thirty days, which seems a huge amount of time. And when they say, "Oh, it's fifty thousand words," it's only one thousand six hundred and sixty words a day. It doesn't sound a lot, but if you really look at your diary, you might find that of those thirty days, you've only got twenty two that you can actually sensibly do any writing in yeah um and so when you're trying to work out how much to do every day then i would uh on the side of you know try and do twice what you think you need to do mm-hmm. um there's always life's always going to throw you a curved ball at some point uh you know there'll be an exciting event to go to and you think, oh no i've got to do my <laughs> nano oh, you know i'd rather go to the party so if you I, I, every now and then i have what i call awesome days where i do like ten thousand words yeah i just write all day i look in my diary and work out where my husband's going to be out when there's nothing else got to be done and i just write all day i'm exhausted by the end of it but it's a it's a really it's a weird kind of high when you get totally into your novel in that way oh it's brilliant yeah yeah don't don't try and i mean i i aim because i'm ml i'm the what do they call it municipal Municipal liaison liaison. yeah catchy Yeah. yeah Yeah, so I, I cannot not win. I mean, it can't happen. But also, <laughs> but, but also, the last kind of five or six days, I spend most of my time kind of cheering other people on who are, who are flagging. Yeah. And so it, it helps me if I've actually finished my 50,000 by about the 20th, 21st, 22nd. Mm-hmm. So I actually start off aiming for about 80,000 yeah. because I know I need that many anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think the best thing is to try and do it in the first week. That would be a that would be a good plan. <laughs> uh, but but no, it's it's important just to be aware that the time can slip away, and then you get in a panic, and then your brain freezes. The other thing as well is to be aware of, and you can you can try this out beforehand. What's the best time of day for you to work? Now I'm best first thing in the morning. I get up about half past five. Mm-hmm. My husband's fast asleep. He doesn't stir till about half past seven. I've got two clear hours. Mm-hmm. I can change the world in two hours. <laughs> uh, so I can get all my nano writing done before he wakes up. Yeah. Uh, in theory. In practice, what will happen is I actually, I actually do work. <laughs> I've yeah. got blogs to write. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I would, I would try and clear your decks for November. Look at what's already there that you can't shift. Obviously, you've got to get family and friends on board so that they don't suddenly think, well, where's she gone? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we know we have a very uh, upfront conversation about food um, <laughs> before November starts because, like, you know, it's not going to be the normal stuff during November. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be really tired. And I'm also going to be a bit spaced out. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be I'm going to be in that novel. I'm not I'm not going to be normal. Yeah. Um, well, you know, worse than usual. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I would I would think that people need to prepare in as much as it's like going on a holiday before you go on holiday you've got to sort your packing out you've got to you know you've got to get everything sorted you've got to clear your desk 
And then you go away, and of course, when you come back, there's loads to do. But that month for me is a pure indulgence. Uh, and I, you know, I, I do the run up to it, knowing that I don't want to be, I don't want to be interrupted during November. Um, and I've been very, very careful to avoid uh, taking on any kind of social things. You know, I've tried very hard. We're actually going to the theatre on the 1st of November. We're going to go and see um, Alan Bennett's, probably his final play. Now, I can't miss that. No. But, but... <laughs> um, I'll be up at midnight the night before, because, because I will, yeah. to start writing. So I've already looked at my diary thinking, yeah, it's a couple of days here where I've probably bitten off my than I can chew. But so that, three that's days... important, isn't it? It's the looking at the diary yeah. is important, and it's treating it as if, uh, you say, it's like writing by appointment almost. Yes. And make sure that you've blocked the time in. It's a case of carving out the time. I mean, like the Remembrance Weekend, I can never write because we go to a special service up country. Mm-hmm. But my husband's away for three days the following week. Three days. <laughs> you so get loads I, done. You know, I'll get loads done. And that's the 13th, 14th, 15th. So basically, I, I look at it in advance and, and I put people off. If somebody says, can we meet up in November? I say, well, I'm a bit busy. Can we make it the first week in December? Get your friends and family on side. Uh, I mean, some people take a week's you know, annual leave and, and go off somewhere. But if you if you if you run at it and you do as much preparation as you can during October, think about your characters, think about what it is about your characters, how they're gonna conflict with each other and, you know, what the what the story's all about basically. Um and let it kind of fester in your mind, mm-hmm. get some notes down and then, you know, first of November you just hit the ground running. It's so exciting. I mean, I love it. I love it. It's. I mean, it's totally addictive. Um, I don't know any, but I, I know people who've done it and then not done it. But I've known. I know lots of people who've done it and just have to do it every over and year. over again. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, and it halfway through they go. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. I hate it. <laughs> No, you don't. You love it. You love the rose-tinted glasses come on about you know six months later, especially if you've got a novel in your hand that you didn't have before. Well, that you know, there is no way I could break the back of a novel at any other time of the year. I've got lots of half-finished novels mm-hmm. and lots of things I can work on. Um, but you know, other people are more disciplined in as much as you know they will in January, February. They'll go, they'll finish it, they'll edit it, and they'll get it out there. And that's good. That's you know, well done them. Um, I'm not so. Right. I mean, I've had a lot of books published in the past, so I don't have that same goal of, of publication that other people have. But I, I want to write it because I'm actually I want to get a message out of my head and onto paper. Mm-hmm. I think if you've got a message you want to get across, this is the ideal opportunity to do it. And there's so much support from the Nano organisation itself, from the ML. I think it's it's important. Nano is like a, um, a launch pad. Mm-hmm. You know, you can get started on writing um i love it I and love is it. it your preferred way to write a novel yes it's, i wouldn't have the motivation to do it otherwise i mean i i i am a very organized person I mean, you know anyone who anyone who i mentor knows perfectly well but you know i'm, a <laughs> and I'm very organized or what have you but actually getting myself to do something i'm a bit of a last minute merchant actually i've got a play i need to do <laughs> my next may and i've known about it since last may <laughs> have I done it? No. Um, and the novels, as I say, I do. I limit myself to one a year, and I I write it in November, and then I work on it during the year. Some of them I I do in November. I don't really like them very much, and then maybe I will come back to them two or three years later and um, revise and do it. something. Yeah. And some of them I really like and think, wow, I really want to take this one further. Mm-hmm. And I like the characters and what have you. I've got a writing group that we meet um, every month, and we sh- we share a chapter a month. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm currently working on the 2014 one mm-hmm. with them. Um, so that shows how old it is. But it's one that I really like. Yeah. And I'm happy to work on it. And so, it's a piece of work but, that wasn't there, you know, in October of that year. And then it was there yeah. at the end of November. And people don't have to do a novel. I mean, if somebody's got some other project, that they, like a play, or, um, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe someone's thinking, do you know what, I need to get all my blogs done for the next year. Well, yeah. Write them in November. Plan your editorial calendar for next year. And sit and write a blog a day for thirty days. That that will sort you out for six months into next year. Yeah, because the idea, although although it is National Novel Writing Month, as you say, the, the actual the target is to write at least fifty thousand words, isn't it? And some people do use it as an as a, as an excuse, if you like, to to get lots of their other words down as well. I mean, short story writers could literally write a short story a day for good yeah. effect. Yeah, but it it is lovely to see that little kind of graph. 
with the line where you should be up to and you're just over it. <laughs> it is brilliant. That's what I remember. And and I mean and that and that was using the actual nano site when when I did it. But, yeah, it's on the site. But, yeah. but 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 tell people about the actual targets and the goals that you can set within Scrivener. Because again I use those when I I mean I'm writing my novel, you know, all year round sort of thing. And I use those targets, especially when I first start out on a novel, I use those all the time. And again, I love seeing that you know, that red yeah. line turn amber yeah. and then green you, or whatever that's right what you can do is uh you for each um document and i say i use one theme per document you can set targets for each of those so as you say it can go from red to amber to green and you know you've written that theme so you might set a theme target of maybe 500 sales whatever whatever it's an arbitrary number to be honest with you, you just get some words in there yeah. but you can also have you can also have a, a target for the whole project. Uh-huh. So, I mean, obviously, for Nano, you put 50K in for that. But you can, with that one, you can you can tell it things like, I'm not going to write on Sundays and Wednesdays. Yeah. You know, there's no way I'm going to. So it will then do all the maths for you, working out how many words you need to write in the remaining days. And, of course, if you dip underneath uh, your, your schedule, it then amends it so that you, when you come back to the machine, it tells you how many words you have to write today to, to get on target again. So it's a bit like a, <laughs> a nagging mum mm. um, telling you how much you're going to do. And you can have session targets to you know, say to keep you going on a daily basis when, on the days you do work. So you just tell it, I'm ending on the 30th of November. I can't work on Sundays and Wednesdays. You know, give it to me and tell me how much I have to do. And and it pings at you and, you know, that kind of thing when, you, when you've when hit your target. So, yes, it's it's a good way of keeping track of are you – I mean, you don't spend all your time adding up and picking No, it's great. Up. I mean, when and especially when you set yourself a session target. Again, I've done it before where I've had that separate window that's, you know, that's up there. And it's like, especially on days when it's a, probably a bit tougher to find the motivation or whatever mm. it is. And there really is – I know it sounds childish, <laughs> but there really is something <laughs> about seeing that little line go up and then thinking, yes, it's green yeah. and I've done it for today and it. I can, I've you know – and I can yeah. rest easy, and or, or or you can keep going. Obviously, you don't have to stop, but it really, really does motivate you. And again, it's something that you can't do in just a basic um, word processor. How important do you think it is in, in general with writing? How important do you think it is to get a group of like-minded, supportive people around you if you want to succeed? I think- yeah, I think it's I think it's very important. I'm very much a, uh, a supporter of the artist way, um, mm-hmm. Julia Cameron. In as much as and I think I think it's really important for artists, writers, you know, whether they're painters, poets, whatever whatever you do that's to do with art, to have time where you meet other such weird folks. Because there's no two ways about it. We are a bit weird, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think it is really important. I mean, if people haven't got opportunities to meet face to face, there are lots of opportunities to meet online. I mean, obviously, Nano has its regional forums and chat, and they have chat rooms and what have you. But there's usually, I mean, people like me. I mean, I do these webinars um, just for an hour at a time for people to come along and ask questions about how to do Nano. Because if you, have, if you haven't got somebody near you who you can talk to, you can at least come online and. and you know, speak remotely yeah, to somebody like absolutely, you. yeah. And there's that supports of, there. There's Facebook groups, uh, you know, there's Twitter. There's loads of ways. The trick is to not get distracted too much by all that and actually get the writing done as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very you see, you, you can, I think you need to compartmentalise it. If you wake up first thing, if, if you're an early morning writer, wake up, do your 1,660 words, whatever it is, 2,000 mm-hmm. words that you're going to do, and then check Facebook. Yeah. Don't kick off with Facebook, otherwise you'll never get it. <laughs> you'll never get it done. Okay, let's take a quick break there for this week's Book Bloggers Corner. And this week, Catherine Sunderland, a.k.a. Bibliomaniac, brings us her review of a thriller, The Classroom, by A.L. Bird. This is the BBC Book Bloggers Corner. The best thrillers are the ones which take our deepest fears and make us watch what happens when other characters have to live through our worst nightmares. And this is something that Bird does extremely well. This book keeps you on the edge of your seat as Bird creates an atmosphere of unease, anxiety and a sense of pending threat from the outset and then continues to crank up the tension until the very last sentence. Kirsten White is a devoted mother to Harriet. 
Everything she does is for Harriet, and after years of IVF, Harriet is incredibly precious to Kirsten that she's almost in pain with the thought of being away from her. And now it's time for her to start school, Kirsten struggles to let go of her and to entrust her daughter into the care of a teacher, a teacher who happens to be new to the school. Meet Miriam Robertson. She's been waiting for the perfect girl. She has been watching, planning and preparing for this moment. And when Harriet arrives in her classroom, she knows this is the child she has been waiting for. This is the child she wants. What unfolds next is a gripping tale of manipulation, deceit, secrets, trickery and psychological drama. This is a great read for fans of psychological thrillers. Even if you see some of the twists coming, it's still compulsive reading as the backstories are revealed and add more darkness and complication to the dynamics and relationships between the characters. Bird explores the motivations of these women very well and the way their stories knit together is skillfully handled. I am a huge fan of A.L. Bird because I know she'll always deliver a book I can lose myself in for a few hours while she takes me on a twisting journey of shocks, twist and drama through characters I'm always able to identify or empathise with in some way and always find them intriguing enough to see how their journey ends. Well written, well paced and with a great premise, The Classroom should make it onto your reading list this autumn. There are also some really good book group questions at the end, which I thought were really interesting. Book Bloggers Corner. There you go. That was The Classroom by A.L. Bird, and you can find a link to that in the show notes, along with a link to Catherine's blog that's got loads of great book reviews and recommendations. Okay, let's get back to my chat with Anne Rainbow, where we talked about some of the other types of projects that you can use Scrivener for. I know, I know you mentioned there your writing play. So, again, you use Scrivener for that, presumably, as well as your blog yeah. posts. And I've used it um, for screenplays and scripts. And, uh, and again, people can find a post um, over on uh, Scrivener Virgin that will be live the same time as this podcast of Roundabouts. Yeah. And they can go yeah. and have a look at that and can give you some um, tips on that. But you can literally use it for any any kind of writing I mean I haven't used it yet for non-fiction but I'm planning to use it for non-fiction but I should imagine it's brilliant for non-fiction as well yes I did my uh, editing the red pen way book I mean yeah it was a now I have written a lot of books in the past and I've written them using word when I was doing IT and math books you know in my previous existence but I did that non-fiction editing book about two years ago now and it's so easy because you literally just on your card on the cork board write what your topics are it's, it, you know like mind mapping but straight onto the machine mm-hmm. and then you just you i mean i just type what i would say if i had somebody in front of me and i was trying to explain to them i just type what i would write now i do the same thing when i'm when i'm doing slides for a presentation mm-hmm. um i just i do come up with my headings and get these slide headings in place and then i literally type what i would say confronted with that on the screen so if i was yeah. physically in the room what would i say um, and then from that, I glean what bits I'm actually going to put on the slide. And I kind of, I kind of, I, I start top down. Other people work differently. They might start from the beginning and work through the end. I never write a novel from beginning to end ever. You always, you I like pick, to skip around. Well, especially if I've got say one person in first person, one uh-huh. you know, one point of view in first person, I will probably write all of their scenes first. Right. In one hit. And then you. And, uh, and then I'll go. Then I'll go back to the beginning, and I'll start writing a third person. Uh, you know, in, I'm going to interject, if you like, with other scenes. Uh-huh. Um, but but I'll have worked it out beforehand, and I'll have colour coded it on Scrivener. So I just think, okay, let me do Hazel. Let me do, let me get Hazel done because she's only got ten scenes. Let's get a shot of her. Um, and then having done all of her scenes, I then go back and do somebody else's point of view um, because I'm then in one head. You know, I've only got I've only got one person in my head. Yeah, and you can just focus on one thing. I mean, there's so many yeah. different things that we, as you say, you touched on color coding there. I mean, I use icons as well to when I'm yeah. when I'm doing my edit. I lots of people do it different ways. When I'm when I'm editing, when I've done a first draft of a chapter, it's red, and when I do another pass, it goes to amber, and then when I do the final pass, it goes to green. Um, yep. But there's all sorts of different things you can flag things, as you say, you can do collections and all these different things. So. Just in as, as we kind of work away towards wrapping things up, so 
there's there will be people listening to this presumably when this goes out there's going to be sort of two weeks before NaNoWriMo there'll be people that yep. haven't got Scrivener and they probably think what the hell are they talking about you know or, you know how do I get hold of it but you can get it on a trial can't you so they could try it out for, for, and get it ready for Nano if they wanted you can and and if and if you win Nano the odds are I mean I, ha- I don't know what the prizes are this year but you know nine times out of ten there is a uh, discount it's not a huge amount of money anyway no it's but a there's usually a discount on the uh, on Scrivener um, as part of the the wi- you know the, the winners um, booty as it were mm-hmm. so but if they I mean if they decide they're going to to start by Wednesday the 24th of October that's when I've got my first kickoff webinar yeah and so if they haven't got a clue what it's about then if they came along to that they can ask whatever questions they like um, I'll be using I'll look at last year's presentation and then I'll change the screen grabs because obviously the site changes every year as well mm-hmm. and I need to make sure that it's doing what I expect it to yeah, do yeah sure yeah um so Wednesday the twenty fourth is the kickoff for me online. But yeah. if they, if wherever they live in the world, if they go to their nano site and they sign up for their local region, uh-huh. the odds are there will be a face to face meeting. They can meet their ML and they can ask them questions and meet the other writers as well. I mean Brilliant. that's going to happen yeah. probably. I mean in um, in Cornwall, I don't know the Devon dates because uh, I haven't actually got access to those. But the Cornwall one is on the twenty. Oh, it's 20, I think it's the 27th, actually, 27th of October. It's quite, it's near to the end of October, but wherever people live, if they just go to their regional page on the nano site and check what take the kickoff is, the kickoff is the, is the meeting where the ML will say, hello, this is what it's all about, and this is what you have to do, and so on. Um, if anyone's brand new to Scrivener and they download it in the next week or so and they want to start using it, I wouldn't try to learn how to use anything apart from typing your manuscript in that middle <laughs> area. Don't, don't worry about exploring much else. <laughs> Just type in the middle area because whatever you put in the middle area, we can rescue it at a later stage. But if they wanted to come along to the Tuesday evening um, Simply Scrivener specials, I will be starting. Actually, it starts before this goes out. Um, I'm starting on the 16th, I think it is. Yeah, 16th of October. Right. Three before we kick off, four during November, and then one afterwards. Uh, and but people can dip in and just ask whatever questions they like. There's loads of support out there. There is, and I mean, there's and there's loads of stuff on ScrivenerVirgin.com, your site. People can go on there. There's loads yeah. of blog posts and there's loads of like quick tips and different bits and pieces. But um, I would definitely encourage people to go and. Well, I do on a regular basis. I always encourage people to check out Scrivener anyway. But I would encourage them to download the trial, give it a go, as you say. Um, because apart from anything else, you will sell, you save yourself massive amounts of time when you get to the edit, which we haven't even had a chance to go into in loads of detail on here. And perhaps we can have you on again uh, in the future and talk about some of that stuff and the, the other side of it and then getting it out and exporting it as a whatever document you want. For anyone who's kind of thinking, oh, I'm not sure I can do it, just do it. If you just do it, you'd be amazed. Well, the way that I look at it anyway with any of these things is... Yeah, you know, if you aim for the moon and you miss, you'll be amongst the stars. It, it, you're going to have however many words, whether it's 50,000 or it's 5,000, they're words you're not going to have had before the start of November. And the other thing in terms of how NaNoWriMo kind of fits into the ethos of what Joined Up Writing is about, I'm always talking about let's get joined up and let's connect and all that kind of thing. Regardless of the writing and everything else, which obviously is the most important aspect of it, you do have that whole community and that idea of linking up with other people and those like-minded people. And you can make friends and another project might come out of it or projects um, might come out of it, meeting these different people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I definitely encourage people to do it anyway. So so if people want to find out more about you, Anne, and uh, what you do and basically in the run-up, you've mentioned a lot of it, but what what's... What is, where's the best place to go? Is it ScrivenerVirgin.com? Yeah. ScrivenerVirgin.com has got me. Uh, I'm sort of Scrivener Virgin. I'm also Red Pen, so I do a lot of mentoring with writers and what have you. But there is a nano page. I only put it up a couple of days ago, uh, which lists all the various uh, webinars I'm doing and the blog posts and what have you. So it's on the main menu, Nano 2018. So if they go there, they can see all the nano stuff there. But if they're interested in Scrivener, they just need to go to the blog. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if there is an index, actually, so that if anyone is particularly worried about a particular topic, they can look it up. Um, and the Simply Scrivener specials happen every week. They're just like a surgery, 60 minutes, question and answer. Um, hopefully, people send me questions ahead of time. that I can then prep some slides and what have you in a demonstration. But if they ask on the spot, I just do my best. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you roll with it. 
<laughs> yeah, and I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook and stuff as well. Yeah, Twitter. brilliant. Well, I'll put all those links in the show notes. But for now, thanks a million, and it's been great to talk to you. And to you. So thanks again to Anne and you should definitely check out her excellent site scrivenervirgin.com and if you haven't already done so download the free trial of Scrivener and give it a go and I'll put all of those links in the show notes over at joinedupwriting.co.uk. That pretty much wraps things up for another week but don't forget you can find the entire back catalogue of interviews on the website. Make sure you subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast or wherever else you get your podcasts from. You can even listen on YouTube now. Uh, And then you can have the show downloaded automatically every week if you subscribe. Also remember to leave me a review on Spotify or iTunes, that's Apple Podcasts as it's called now. Um, And just like books, podcasts thrive on feedback and reviews from our audience. And it would be great to see some more ratings and comments as it also boosts the show and makes it easier for other listeners to find us. And particularly for our American listeners, I know from looking at the numbers that lots and lots of American Uh, listeners tune in but it'd be great if you could reflect that and give me a quick review and rating on itunes or apple Podcasts, as uh, it's now called that would be brilliant just so that i know you're out there and it also helps people to find the show so that would be excellent um and you know and if you can't do that then don't keep it to yourself spread the word on social media anyway and just tell a friend about the show that would be fantastic so speaking of future shows our next episode will be an interview with harper collins editor cleo cornish who gave me a fascinating insight into what she does and how she does it as well as some hints and tips to help you stand out from the slush pile so be sure to check that out And we'll also be squeezing in another special NaNoWriMo episode during November to help you through that dark month when you're trying to get those 50,000 words down if you're taking part. And that will be with uh, my collaborator, Maria Smith. So look out for that one as well. But until that, thanks for listening. I'm Wayne Kelly. Happy writing and reading. And I'll see you next time. And good luck with NaNo. Right.